Hello class. Okay, um, <clears throat> so I'm going to go through some worked examples um, from the practice test I gave you last week. Um, I'm actually, go I'll go through all of them, but I'm not going to go through all of them today. So I'll do, I'll do like two or three a day for this week, and that will be pretty much the videos for this week. And um, so, and no, Sarah, I'm not going to go through all of them because they're too hard. I'm just doing that because otherwise the video would take, uh, yeah, pretty long to go through that. Okay, so I'll go through, I'll do one and two today. Okay, so the first one was binomial expansion. Uh, so find the coefficient of x in the expansion um, of 2x minus 1, or 2x minus 1 over x times 5. Um, I guess I'll do it on here. There might be enough room. Okay, so we have fifth row of Pascal's triangle. So fifth row is 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, 1. Okay, so if you remember the binomial expansion, the pattern, so you use the exponent, and this gets an x. So it's 1, x, you start with that exponent, and then each other term goes down by 1. And then the y's go in reverse. So there's no y's here. So in this first term, it's going to be 1y. So this is my coefficient, x for y. There's my coefficient. I lower the x, and I add 1 to the y. I just keep doing that using these coefficients. Okay, so that's the general form for the binomial expansion to the power of 5. Okay, that's just x plus y. Now I have to go back in and replace. So this is my x and that's my y. So I'll go back through and replace all those. So put in 2x here. So when you do to the power of 5 to the x, don't also forget to do it to the 2 as well. Same thing here. Okay, and this goes in for anywhere you see a y. So plug all those in correctly and simplify, and you'll get, and you know, put them back in descending powers. 32x to the fifth, so 2x goes here, that's x to the fifth, and 2 to the fifth is 32. Okay, minus, we get 80x cubed, okay, because 1 over x for the y cancels one of these x's. And then, so I have 2 to the fourth, and then times 5. So that's where the 80 comes from. Okay. Plus 80x minus 40 over x plus 10 over x squared minus 1 over x to the fifth. Okay. So if you're done, if you plug them all in correctly, that's what you'll get. Okay, so it wanted the coefficient of x. So we only have one term with x in it. That's here. So that's where they got the 80 from. Okay. All right now, find the coefficient of x in the expansion. So we just did this part up here. Okay. So that's what this line here is. And now we're going to multiply it by these two terms. So that means after we expanded this out, we distribute the 1 to all of these, and then we distribute this term to all of these. So we'll get um, 1, 2, 3, 4, we'll get Basically, we would get 12 terms if we did that. But we're not going to do that because all we care about is the one that has x in it. So really, you're just looking at how do powers of x change. So like this x x to the fifth and this one over x to the fifth, these obviously are not even going to be close to that. So let's just distribute the one. If I distribute the one, none of the powers of x change. So that means this is still going to be ax. So that still will have an x with it. So that's going to be one of my terms. Okay, now let me distribute this 3x squared. Okay, if I distribute 3x squared, that goes up to x to 8. That goes up to x at 6. That's x cubed. So when I get to here, this x squared on the bottom will cancel this x squared. So there'll be no x's there. But right here, I got one x on the bottom that will cancel one of these x. So it'll leave an x. So I have 40, and then I just got to remember to, and it's a plus, um, sorry, it's a, so we have positive, 3 times a negative 40, so that's negative. 3 times 40, that's 120x. Okay, 
and then 80x minus 120x is negative 40x or just negative 40 because I just wanted the coefficient. Okay. Number two. Um, so this was a, oh by the way, um, binomial expansion. I believe that was chapter, I want to say chapter 7 or chapter 8. Um, this is coordinate geometry. This was like chapter 1. So it's one of the very first things we did. Alright, so point A has coordinates 2, 6. And the equation of the perpendicular bisector of the line AB is given by this equation. Okay, so remember what perpendicular bisector means. That means a line that's perpendicular to this line that goes through the midpoint. That's what bisector means. So basically, if this is point A and this is point B, wherever the midpoint is at, there's a line. So that's perpendicular bisector. So you have 90 degrees to this line, and bisector means it goes right through the midpoint. Okay, so we know the equation of this line. 2y equals 3x plus 5. Uh, we know the coordinates of A. So we want to find the equation of this line. So to find the equation of line, you need a point. Well, we got a point. And you need a slope. So we don't have the slope for this. And we can't find the slope using two points because we don't know what B is. But because we have a perpendicular line, remember a perpendicular slope, opposite inverse? So if we know what the slope of this is, we just take the opposite inverse of this and that gives a slope for this one. So to do opposite inverse, or to find the slope of this first, remember you have to have this solve for y. So I have to get rid of this 2. So I'm just going to divide by the 2. So the slope for that line is, remember it's whatever's with the x. So the slope for that line is 3 halves. That means my perpendicular slope is a negative 2 thirds. Or if we just want to say the slope for AB is two-thirds. So now that I have a point of slope, I can just use point slope formula. Y minus 6 uh, equals negative two-thirds x minus negative 2 or plus 2. Okay, so see uh, we get y equals negative two-thirds x plus uh, that's four-thirds plus six, so that's fourteen-thirds, yep. Okay, or, if you want to get rid of matter how um, you bring the fraction over, you write it as 3y, negative 2x plus 14. Or, you can even write it as 3y plus 2x equals 14. So, you, so the ace would take either one of these. Remember, this one is um, the preferred method, or the, the preferred form. But if you had these two, they would still take that. Okay, the coordinates of b. So we want to find B. So we know the coordinates of A. We know the equation of this line. That don't really help us get B. We don't. We know the slope of that line, but which you can apply the slope. However, you don't know how many times you need to apply it. If you apply the slope, it could take you from here to here to here, or the slope might only be, you know, small increments. So yes, you could use a slope, but you need to know how many times to apply the slope. That makes sense. The way to do that is you find the midpoint. Because okay, that's what a midpoint is. It's right in between. So from here to here, if the x value from here to here changes 5, then the x value from here to here will change 5 as well. So let's find the midpoint. Well, what is the midpoint? It's an intersection. So we set this equation equal to this equation. Uh, remember intersection is like simultaneous equations. Okay. All right, so add this over, subtract this over, do whatever you gotta do to solve for x, and you'll get x is equal to one. Okay, um, easiest thing, so two and three common denominator is 6, so if you multiply everything by 6, that will cancel out all the fractions, and that may, might be easier to solve it that way. Uh, and then solve fraction, you get 1. Okay, Plug 1 back into here, and you'll get y is equal to 4. So that's the midpoint.
1 comma 4. So if the midpoint is 1, 4, a is negative 2, 6. So look at the x values. To get from negative 2 to 1, all I did was add 3. Because that's the midpoint, I can do it again to get to b. So what's 3 plus 1? 4. Right? And for a, for the y value, to go from 6 to 4, I subtracted 2. So then I subtract 2 from this one, get b. So b then is 4, comma 2. Okay, so yeah, those two questions took about 10 minutes to explain, so that's why I'm going to do two or three a day, depending on how long the questions are. All right, if you still have questions on these, um, just message me and I'll try to work with you one-on-one -on -one through either one of these. All right, thanks guys. Have a good day.